Hello, Internet. My name is Ayla Teslermabe, and today in this lesson, we're going to be talking about a guitar pedal effect family known as gain effects. So let's talk about what that even means. And also, I do want to preface this by saying that there is no requirement for guitar players to be totally into their gear and know everything about their tone. You do you, you do whatever works for you. But I do think that there is a lot of power that comes from being able to control your tone and, you know, getting exactly the kind of sound you want because it'll help you get closer to sounding like your heroes. It'll help you hone in on your own artistic sound and identity as a guitar player. And if you ever want to get into production, this is all stuff that you'll need to know how to work through. So I think there are a lot of reasons to start exploring tone, especially if you find it fun. So let's dive in. What is gain? Because that's obviously going to be a very important term to define in this lesson. And I want to first separate volume from gain because a lot of people sometimes get them confused. I got them confused for a while, but they're actually different things. So volume, it's like when you turn, you know, the volume of your amp up and down or your guitar. It's just affecting, you know, the loudness of the signal. Whereas gain is affecting the volume within a sound system. So it actually might end up manipulating the tone and character of sound that you're hearing. Oftentimes it can add some grit to your tone, it can add some saturation, um, and that's where it is different from volume. So if I roll off the volume, you'll notice that the signal is simply getting quieter, but it's not necessarily changing in its character of tone, as in getting grittier or dirtier or less. Whereas when I throw on some sort of overdrive effect, you can hear that some sort of grit is added to the tone. So let's highlight some different type of gain effects that have been used by the iconic guitar players of the past and present. And hopefully this will help you figure out what the difference is between these different types of pedals and which one might be appealing to you. Gain effect number one is the TC Electronic Spark Mini Booster, which is usually referred to as a clean boost or a transparent boost. And it's definitely the mildest of all of the effect pedals I'll show you today. As the name might imply, the intention with this particular pedal is just to transparently boost the signal, you know, the volume. However, even though they want it to be perfectly transparent, it usually isn't. And sometimes this can be used to your own benefit as a player, because if you have an amp that naturally has a bit of grit on it, if you throw a boost in front of it, you're gonna drive that amp even more. And same thing with effect pedals, we'll explore this more later, but essentially it can bring out grittiness in your amp or in other pedals. Um, and the reason it might not work so well in this case is because I'm running through a twin reverb, which is specifically designed to not break up, even as you turn it up to higher volumes. But not all amps are like that, so it can be a lot of fun. But you can hear, there is a little bit of grit added, as well as volume. It's subtle, but Brian May and Rory Gallagher are two examples of guitar players who would use this in front of a much grittier amp or overdrive, and they would actually be able to bring out a lot of character and you know, grittiness in their tone. So, this is a great pedal for making things louder. That's what I usually use it for. But again, it can also be used to drive other pedals and amps and make them dirtier sounding. So that's our first effect pedal. Let's move on to the next one. So now we're gonna take a look at a very specific branch of the gain effect pedal family known as overdrive. Essentially what overdrive is supposed to do is emulate the sound of your amp being cranked enough so that it breaks up, which again was kind of ostensibly the intention of, you know, the boost that I was talking about before, where you can use it to drive the amp so that it breaks up. The good thing with overdrive is it allows you to get that broken up sort of tone without having to turn your amp up to a trillion, because that can hurt your ears and your neighbors might be upset, and sometimes you don't want that. But overdrive comes in many different forms. You know, there are lots of overdrives out there that will add different sort of characters to the tone. Like right now, we're gonna take a listen to the Ibanez TS9 Tube Screamer 
kind of made famous by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. So we can hear some really nice grittiness added to the tone. So again, without any overdrive, this is what we hear. With overdrive. Very nice. And of all of the overdrives that I'll be showing you, this one definitely has the most transparency to it, as in it's less saturated and maybe full sounding than the others. You can still sort of hear the natural tone of the guitar through it, but of course there's a lot of awesome crunch that's also added on there. Very nice, especially if you like that Stevie Ray Vaughan Texas blues sound. It's perfect for that. But now let's move on to the next overdrive. So up next we have the Lawrence Petras Design 68 drive. The newer models of this pedal sound even better, which is saying a lot because this already sounds fantastic, as you'll hear in a moment. But this pedal was created to emulate the sound of a 1968 Marshall Super Lead Plexi 12000 series. This is obviously the perfect pedal for anyone who loves, you know, late 60s, 70s rock tone. Let's just compare it to the Tube Screamer so we can hear how differently that overdrive is colored. So this pedal emulates the organic, warm, liquid sounding overdrives from, you know, the 1968 era of music history. Again, like I said, it's perfect for anyone who likes players from that era. You know, Jimi Hendrix, The Who, all of those kinds of rock bands used, you know, Marshall stacks with the 1968 era specifications. But also, more modern players like Eddie Van Halen used also, you know, 1968 Plexi specifications to get his famous brown sound. So, it's a really cool pedal, again, for anyone who likes that type of playing. And that sound. Very nice. Okay, let's move on to the next overdrive. So the last overdrive pedal I'm gonna be showing you today is the Lawrence Petras Design 87 drive. Again, this is an older model of the pedal, but I think it perfectly shows, you know, just how overdrive progressed throughout the decades. And it is even more high gain and saturated than the previous overdrives because music at that time was heading in a heavier direction. So this pedal is perfect for anyone who likes, you know, the rock of the 80s, hair metal, all of that kind of stuff, high gain rock. It's emulating the sound of a lot of Marshall Plexi stacks that people were using in LA recording studios at the time. You know, the JCM 800, all of those sorts of tones. Let me play you a little bit of music with it and let me know what you think. <laughs> As you might have heard, that pedal has an even more searing, high gain, heavy, modern sort of tone. But let's get even heavier. Ah, segue. Move on to the next one. I'm all about my segues. Yes. Now we're going to move into another branch of the gain effect family known as distortion. If the last effects I was showing you were not quite heavy enough, this might be for you, especially if you like styles of music such as metal, punk really, really heavy rock, whatever it is. As the name suggests here, this pedal, the metal zone, 
it's used to emulate kind of a typical metal sound. And it's one of the most polarizing pedals out there. But if dialed in right, I actually think it can sound quite nice. Um, and it's also supposed to be used not directly into an amp, but used as a preamp sort of thing. Um, and that's where it sounds the best. But that's not what I'm going to do in this case. I'm just going to plug it directly into the amp, see what happens. But let's take a listen to it. So as you heard, that is definitely a heavier sounding pedal than the overdrives I showed you previously. Not all distortion sounds exactly like this, but I think that gives a pretty good idea of what separates distortion from overdrive. So the last type of gain effect we're going to be looking at in this video is fuzz. So this effect came quite literally from guitar players in the 50s and 60s using damaged equipment by accident or on purpose. It's typically a lot more unruly and jagged sounding than other types of gain effects. And it works by heavily saturating and clipping your signal. It's just a really cool sounding effect. So Hendrix is a guitar player who is closely associated with this type of tone. But it's also perfect for heavier players who like more modern bands like the Smashing Pumpkins. I know Billy Corgan, huge fuzz fan as well. And what's interesting about this pedal, the MXR Brown Acid Fuzz, is of course the name itself and you know the design of it is a reference to Woodstock, which happened in 1969. But apparently this pedal is based off of 1970s UK fuzz circuitry. I personally think it works really well for either. And if any of those styles are appealing to you, maybe this is the perfect pedal for you and it's worth checking out. So the last thing I want to touch on before we move on, because I did mention that I would talk about this, that gain effect, let's move all the way back to the first pedal I showed you. When you put it in front of another effect, it will further drive the natural sound of that effect pedal. So again, let's listen to our fuzz. Definitely really saturated already, but let's turn that boost on and see what happens. Of course it did make it louder, but I could hear that it was even fuzzier sounding, to use an adjective that might describe it well. Again, that's a really cool way to start looking into how these pedals can shape your tone. So in conclusion, we talked about different members of the gain family today. Of course, starting with gain, which helps drive and break up the sound of your amp or other pedals that you're using. It's the perfect pedal for anyone who really wants to preserve the sound of their guitar and their amp naturally and they just want to increase the volume but maybe add a little bit of grit to it. Then we talked about overdrive which in the same vein as gain is great if you like the natural sound and tone of your guitar, you know, kind of like a tube amp sort of tone and you want to preserve that, but you want to add a little more grit and color to it. We talked about distortion, which is great if you want an even heavier, saturated, oftentimes hi-fi sort of tone. And then we talked about fuzz, which is great if you, again, want a heavier sort of tone, but one that's probably even more unruly than all of the other effects we talked about 
and has even more of a perceivable kind of grain and jaggedness to it. And if you start to understand these effects, where they come from, who they've been used by, I think you start to understand so much more about music history. And as a guitar player, I think it's amazing to really get a handle on your tone and what you think sounds good, what you think sounds bad. This will all help you on your journey to finding your own artistic voice on the instrument, which I think is the ultimate goal for any musician. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a little something about gain effects and maybe about yourself as well and what you like. I'd love it if you left a comment down below of what your favorite gain effect was that I mentioned in this video or any that you wish that I had mentioned. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care.